the paucity of words for emotions in our language is a clue to the fact that we have put too much emphasis on nuts and bolts stuff and not enough emphasis on conveying the essence of who we are. And so now we empower a special class of people called artists and their job is to convey this essence. But what we need to do is make life into art and take upon ourselves an awareness of the responsibilities that language puts upon us. We're not going to save the world or honor the feminine or do anything worthwhile until we change the way we talk about these things. That's the first step. And, you know, in, in any political agenda, the first thing they want to do is control definitions. I mean... If you define, this is what the Nazis did brilliantly. If you define someone who is Jewish as not a human being, which is what the Nazis did, they called them uh, Untermensch, the underman, subhuman. You know, well, so you've you've changed the reality of what this person is in your mind. Now you can build ovens, deport them, put them in slave labor camps because you have changed their essential nature by changing how you speak about them. And most of what we, most of the changes we've allowed in language have been of this negative, destructive, disempowering sort. The curse of simplification, the easy answer, the glib reply. This is what our politicians, you know, they say, well, you just cut the capital gains tax and, do, and it'll be fine. Everybody knows this is malarkey. It won't be fine. But language metaphors are being misused to delude and to keep some people on top and some people on the bottom. I think that the reason we're spending so much time on this is because I think that what psychedelics do is they catalyze new forms of language. People are still the greatest leap forward in language evolution that happened in my lifetime was under the influence of LSD in the 1960s. And people now make fun of all of that, the concept of the vibes, the concept of grokking, the concept of an ego trip, the concept of a put-down. These are all... People didn't know what an ego trip was until they took LSD. There was no word in the language for that. Uh, uh, so, and, and notice how much energy the establishment has put into denigrating uh, the kinds of languages that evolved in, in the 1960s. It's penetrated everywhere. It's penetrated everywhere. Well, that addresses a different issue, which is the, the meme wars. You all know, I suppose, that a meme is the smallest unit of an idea. In the same way that genes are the smallest units of heredity, ideas are made out of memes. Uh, any coherent notion is a meme. Women should be respected. That's a meme. It's competing against the meme that women are worthless. That's another meme. These two memes compete in this society. One leads to a certain... Believing one of those memes leads to a certain set of consequences. Believing the other meme leans, leads to a different set of consequences. Memes evolve in exactly the same way that uh, organisms evolve. Large ideological structures can be made up of thousands of memes. The meme of democracy is a very complicated meme. It <clears throat> makes certain assumptions about literacy and voting and responsibility and so forth and so on. I believe that what we're involved in here is a meme war and that the best memes will win if the playing field is level. That's why we're talking about the psychedelic experience. If we don't talk about it, it isn't a meme. It's a private obsession. It's a, a something underground. But we bring it into competition in the environment of natural selection for, for uh, uh, applicable meaning when we utter it. 
And that's why the beginning of any social change is discussion. Yeah. I, I sort of wanted to share an experience only because it's remarkably like what you were talking about. Um, and that is... Uh, um, once on uh, psilocybin, uh, I met a, an entity that was right on the picture plane. You know, it, I, it, it was almost annoying. It was like a... Um, a uh, um, an eel made out of some beautiful chiffon and with a dog's head, you know, kind of and looking at me, it's just right there on the picture plane. Um, oh well, that's the dog-headed chiffon. It was the fact that it was so close to my face. Uh-huh. Um, and the other instance was uh, uh, walking down a spiral staircase with. What were my plants shoving things at me, you know? And I, I thought they were rude. That was my take on it, and it resonated with what you said. These were psilocybin visions. Uh, ayahuasca. Oh, ayahuasca. Yeah, one of the things we didn't talk about to, uh, this afternoon is the sort of the ambiance of that DMT state. What is the attitude of these tykes toward you? And it's a, it's, a, it's a curious attitude. They are not entirely friendly, or they are not entirely to be trusted. And if you're a graduate of Irish fairy tale literature, you know that fairies are very, very tricky. That's essentially their major characteristic. And their sense of humor and their sense of comedy doesn't always dovetail very smoothly with our own. I've sort of described the, the tykes as piratical. They, um, when I try to remember where I've had that feeling that I have in the DMT space, where in my life I ran across that feeling before... It was in Indian markets as a child, buying hashish uh, for purposes of smuggling, uh, and being conducted into these situations where everyone was your friend, but they had led you through such a labyrinth of streets and relieved you of all your gold and had given you a Coca-Cola and put you in a room and told you to wait and said, you know, we're your friends. Not to worry. (laughs) All is going to be all right. And it always was. And this is sort of the feeling you have with these things. And it came to me because at the end of this afternoon, we were talking about memes. And I had said how these things offer you these objects. I think what they are is uh, meme traders in another dimension and what they want is ideas and they sort of use the technique that we would use in trading with magpies you know how a magpie will take a piece of colored glass and or or let's shift the metaphor pack rats are you all familiar with pack rats I grew up in the high mountains of Colorado where pack rats exist. And pack rats are traders. They will always leave something for what they take. And so the trick is to get them to leave something more valuable than what they take. And there are numerous anecdotal stories in Colorado about leaving a 7-up cap out and getting back a diamond wedding ring in trade because the the pack rats like one way a, a way when I was a kid we used to hunt treasure in old ghost towns and the way we would do it is we would look for huge abandoned or not abandoned pack rat nests and there in the pack rat nest you would discover watches coins, jewelry, rings, and broken glass, bobby pins, bottle caps, you know, all the detritus. So the DMT creatures are meme traders of some sort. And what they're offering, these things they're offering, are the equivalent of glass beads. 
they're saying, this is the sort of thing a quasi-intelligent primate ought to be able to respond to. <laughs> say, how, how would you like this? Say, oh, wow, let me have that. And they say, well, just a moment. Uh, uh, you know, uh, can't you give us a piece of your folklore or a, a chunk of religious ontology or a little bit of uh, political philosophy? And then we'll give you the bauble. And so there is a trading. And um, what I intend to talk about tonight, in utter indulgence of my own ego, having spent the day denouncing the ego, is uh, an idea. This is what they trade in, is ideas. And they handed me um, a very interesting idea in trade for something which I didn't value all that much, but which I think they, they really got a bang out of, which was uh, I traded them the I Ching in its uh, Wilhelm Bain's translation, and they gave me a complete hyperdimensional map of time and they took the I Ching and twisted it around and wired it back upon itself and then handed it back to me as a gesture so that I could relate to this primitive artifact of my own culture uh, in a new way. 